On a cold December day in Paris, France, two young men changed the course of moving pictures. At Le Grand Café in the center of Paris, the Lumiere brothers created the first movie theater. They had not only led the way by enhancing the camera of the time, but they had successfully developed a method to project a moving picture onto a large screen. The dawn of cinema had begun, and the Lumiere brothers were leading the way for the legacy yet to come. And the reports of the time where people were just fainting, I mean, there's this, when the train is coming in, people supposedly had, were getting up and running out of the room there, thinking that this train was really coming at them, just caught up in that experience and, and seeing these images um, on the screen. And it was something just never seen before. Moving pictures had become a fascination in Europe in the early 1890s. The biggest innovation at the time was Thomas Edison's kinetoscope, which only one person can view at a time. The limitation of film like these gave rise to demand for a machine which would project the pictures onto a screen so that they could be seen by a whole room full of people. But projection of films onto a large screen proved to be difficult. Images were often blurry and the projector produced too much noise. These moving pictures and animations were seen as short, crude form of pastime entertainment, not expected to last. But the Lumiere brothers, innovators, inventors, and leaders had a different idea in mind. Their goal was to produce a practical machine with which to develop a new and an advanced cinema technology. It was the beginning of 1895, if I remember correctly. As I passed by the Rue de la République in Lyon, I noticed a shop in which a crowd had gathered to admire the Edison kinetoscope. I joined the queue and charmed by the timed animated images that these machines produced. I thought to myself that if one could project such images on a screen so that they could be seen by an entire gathering, the impact would be turning. And so I decided to study the problem. You know, I, we overuse the word awesome, uh, but, uh, and I don't think there's anything that's to us as awesome anymore because awesome means almost godlike. And, but when people saw projected images, that was awesome to them because that was a whole new thing. Auguste and Louis Lumiere set out to develop a camera that was transportable. Up until this point, the cameras weighed hundreds of pounds. They were far from practical. They were heavy, immobile, and battery powered. The Lumiere brothers were leaders in the field and through their innovations, they sought to successfully eliminate these problems. With the help of their scientific and photographic backgrounds, the brothers perfected their first motion picture camera in March of 1895. They called it the cinematograph. It was small, light, and cheap. You know how we play the game charades? And when you want to indicate that you're going to give a, the title of a movie, the gesture that you do, right, that came from the Lumiere brothers. That was their machine. That was the cinematograph. The motion of turning the hand crank made it possible for their camera to be portable without electricity or a source of power. Through the invention of the camera, the brothers created a legacy for the technology of film to come. The Lumieres played a leading role in establishing the motion picture screen in Europe and across the sea in the United States. In the first four months of 1896, they had shown their films and had opened cinematograph theaters in London, Brussels, Bombay, Montreal, Sydney, and New York. They astonished viewers wherever they projected their films and created a lasting legacy known today as the cinematic movie theater and also the world of motion picture entertainment that was yet to come. I did a show here at the Ainsworth Opera House one time and uh, a man came up afterwards and he said, I saw that movie that you showed. And I showed, you know, 20 movies. And he said, I saw that one. And I said, huh. I didn't want to tell him he was wrong, but I knew he was because, you know, I had the only copy. And I said, well, I don't really think you've seen that movie. He says, you're right, I never have seen it, but I knew that movie. He said, my father saw it as a child. It so impressed him that he talked about that movie in such detail for the rest of his life that when that movie was shown, it was like I was seeing a repeat. Even with technological advancements in the 1890s, nothing compares to the impact these first films had on audiences worldwide. The technological innovations of the Lumiere's were new and impressive, inspiring generations to come. The Lumiere camera was created at a time when telling stories through motion pictures wasn't common. The Lumiere films led the way for developing different genres, such as comedy, romance, action, and documentary. 
Particularly one that sticks out the most is comedy, and there's the one very famous view that the Lumiere brothers made called, um, I think it's called The Gardener Sprinkled. It's the La Rosa Arrosé in French. I forget how it's translated into English, but it's it's the view where there's a gardener who's watering his fl the flowers, and this little mischievous boy comes in and comes right to the middle of the shot and steps on the hose to cut the water off, and the gardener is spraying, and then the water trickles down, and he can't figure out, and he's looking like this, and the boy takes his foot off the the uh, hose, and then the water bursts in his face, and everybody laughs. The comic moments in the Lumiere films are timeless. The brothers created the groundwork of narratives other filmmakers later built upon. The Lumieres employed camera operators to travel around the world to show motion pictures and also to film foreign locations. The Lumieres were the first documentarians, they were innovators, and they were leaders. Their foreign documentaries brought the world to everyday people. Well, and to, to come and show a film about Niagara Falls, well, who in their wildest dreams would ever get to Niagara Falls or Egypt or whatever? You know, we're so used to that now. You know, you can go online and look at any country in the world that you want to, but not in 1895. After the creation of the Lumiere camera, cinema became a global movement. Early silent films were emerging in France, England, Sweden, Germany, Australia, and the United States. These silent films were distributed internationally. The Lumiere brothers provided the opportunity for a new type of communication, one without language barriers. Cameramen became artists due to the Lumiere brothers' leadership and technology. Cameramen could frame the field to create a purposeful representation of the message. What's become known today as the um, Lumiere diagonal, um, either action occurring on that, act, that diagonal axis or the way that people would be arranged or um, objects would be arranged would be creating sort of these diagonal compositional lines. Um, it's something that is still uh, talked about today. The Lumiere brothers were the first to create documentaries and the first to introduce narratives with a clear beginning and clear ending. Their notion of narration through taking everyday parts of life has remained constant for documentary filmmakers ever since. We see the shot uh, of the gates of where the um, factory workers come in and out of the, of the factory. There's a yard in the building behind and the doors open and everybody comes out and then it ends with the doors closing. So there's this sense of um, narration, a beginning and an ending that also was unique to them at that time but of course copied over and over and over by everybody else who wanted to get into the business. The cinematograph and the leadership of the Lumieres inspired many others, including Georges Millet. Georges had seen the Lumieres' camera in action and he followed in their footsteps. Originally a stage magician, he used his skills on film to create special effects, impressing his audiences. But the Lumiere brothers were unassuming leaders. In film, they too began to believe that eventually film was only entertainment. They were scientists, not entertainers. Nevertheless, the brothers continued to further research film technology. They developed a color projection method for motion pictures, and even experimented and laid the groundwork for 3D film. Through the Lumiere brothers' innovation and creativity, new trails were blazed. The brothers and their workers created over 2,000 films, and each of those films inspired viewers who watched them. The brothers left a lasting legacy for one of the biggest industries today. The predecessors in the motion picture industry, like Edison and his kinetoscope, thought inside the box. The Lumiere brothers took film to a new level and broke open the box. They created innovations and inspired filmmakers to come. Not only George Millet, but also the Lumiere brothers' cameramen began working on their own to create new films. The ideas of the Lumieres projected a range of technology methods, technique, and legacies that were imaginatively powerful. In 1970, the National Panel for Film Festivals held the Short Film Conference in Britain. The goal was to promote early cinema. The techniques and content of these early films were re-examined. Even after the advances of the film industry, the conference was impressed by the art of the Lumiere brothers and other early filmmakers. Contemporary filmmakers continue to study early film because its techniques, innovation, and impact have proven timeless. By expanding this simple idea, the brothers gave life to a flourishing industry. The Lumiere started turning the film reel, and it's still in motion today. <laughs>